Okay, so we're going to solve a differential equation using some of these nifty formulas that we've spent so much time deriving, and of course using the method of Laplace transforms. So I've got a, an initial value problem here that corresponds to a forced harmonic oscillator. So my forcing function I'm calling h of t, that's this piecewise function. So if time were in seconds for the first five seconds, it's turned off. We're not applying any additional force to things. But at time 5, I turn on this forcing function, sine of 2 times t minus 5. So notice that's just the function sine of 2t, but shifted 5 units to the right. Okay. And then I've got these initial conditions, y at 0 is 0, and y prime at 0 is 1. So the first thing I want to do is rewrite this using the heavy side function, which is that on switch that's going to turn on that forcing function at time 5. So y double prime plus 2y prime plus 4y is equal to the heavy side function at 5 times sine of 2 times t minus 5. Okay. And then with these initial conditions. Excellent. So what I want to do now is take the Laplace transform of both sides. And in the interest of space, I'm just going to write that I am taking the Laplace transform of both sides. Now, we're going to be using a lot of our formulas here. I will try to make sure that I refer to which formulas we are using, but I do not have space on the board to write them all down and use them. So I hope you have your formula sheet with you. I've got mine on the floor right here, because I don't have memorized all of the formulas or what their numbers are, but I want to make sure that I give that information to you. Okay, so... I'm going to first of all just work out off to the side what the Laplace transform of y double prime is. Okay. Sometimes I like to do individual pieces on the side and then put them together. Okay. So I know, oops, let's first of all write that this is the Laplace transform of the derivative of y prime. And I know, and this one happens to be formula 11, that that's going to be s times the Laplace transform of y prime minus y prime evaluated at zero. So that's where I'll be plugging in this initial condition of one. Okay. So that's going to equal s. Now, I can use formula 11 again to take the Laplace transform of y prime. So that's going to be s times the Laplace transform of y minus y of zero and then I'm still subtracting y prime of 0. So I'm just going to distribute the s and then plug in these initial conditions. So I'm going to get s squared times the Laplace transform at y. This was just 0, so minus s times 0 is just minus 0, and then this was 1. So we get a minus 1. Okay. So up here, the Laplace transform of y double prime is s squared Laplace transform of y minus 1. That's my Laplace transform of y double prime. Okay. Plus, now I need to take two copies of the Laplace transform of y prime. So that's going to be two copies of the Laplace transform of y prime is s times the Laplace transform of y minus y of 0. Okay. So that right there is two copies of the Laplace transform of y prime, and that's again using formula 11. Now since y of 0 is 0, that piece is just going to drop out. Okay. All right, and then here plus four copies of the Laplace transform of y. Okay, that's going to equal the Laplace transform of this. Now, remember, when we multiply a heavy side function, which is our on switch, by a translated function, the effect of this is that we're going to take e to the negative 5 times s. So this was an on switch at 5. We get e to the negative 5 times s. And then the Laplace transform, it'll be just of sine of 2t. It's the Laplace transform of the function that we shifted five units to the right. And 
what formula is that? That is formula 14. Okay, so let's see what we have here. I've got s squared times the Laplace transform of y minus 1 plus 2s times the Laplace transform of y plus 4 times the Laplace transform of y is going to equal e to the negative 5s and then the Laplace transform of sine of 2t is going to be 2 over s squared plus 2 squared which is 4. Okay. So that's the angular frequency of sine of 2t. Laplace transform of sine of omega t, so my omega here is 2, is omega over s squared plus omega squared. And what formula is that? That is formula 2. Okay, so on the left hand side, I'm going to factor out the Laplace transform of y from all of the terms that have that in it. So there we've got that and that and that. Oh my goodness. It's times s squared plus 2s plus 4. And then we're subtracting 1 from that. And that's equal to e to the negative 5s times 2 over s squared plus 4. s squared plus 2s plus 4? should look very, very familiar if I were solving the associated homogeneous equation. My characteristic equation would be s squared plus 2s plus 4 equals 0. So that shows up in my Laplace transforms as well. Now notice, you can't just go and say, hey, if I take the Laplace transform of this side, I'm going to get L of y times s squared plus 2s plus 4 because there are these constants in here, and several of our constants dropped out because we had y of 0 equaling 0. If y of 0 hadn't equaled 0, I might have some other s's and things in here, even some s squared and stuff. Okay, so I do always have to work it out, but I know I'm on the right track if the, pol if the uh, polynomial that I'm multiplying by L of y is the same polynomial that I would set equal to zero if I were solving the associated homogeneous equation and looking at the characteristic, uh, associated homogeneous equation, yes, and looking at its characteristic equation. Okay, so I'm going to clear some space and solve for L of y. So, in solving for L of y, I'm going to add over the 1, and then I'm just going to divide by that polynomial. So, we will get L of y is equal to 1 divided by s squared plus 2s plus 4 plus e to the negative 5s times 2 over s squared plus 4 times s squared plus 2s plus 4. Okay. Notice I just kept that e to the negative 5 factored out. This was all just one term. I was dividing by this. I just associated that with this rational part of things. Excellent. So, in order to take the inverse Laplace transform, we have some work to do. Okay. First thing I'm going to do is work on the partial fraction decomposition of this. Because I know how to work with fractions that have just a linear factor on the bottom or just an irreducible quadratic on the bottom. Sometimes I have to do some algebra to make them match my formulas. But I don't know how to work with it if I've got two things like that on the bottom. Okay, so let's do our partial fraction decomposition. I've got 2 over s squared plus 4 times s squared plus 2s plus 4. Now, if that factors, I want to factor it, and if it doesn't, I want to know. So pretty clearly, s squared plus 4 is irreducible. Turns out this is 2. It doesn't factor. Now, if you're not sure, 
if you're just like, well, I don't see how to factor it. Um, that doesn't mean it doesn't factor, okay? If you're not sure, use the quadratic formula. If you get real roots, it factors because S minus the root would be one of the, a root would be a factor. But if you get complex roots, then it doesn't factor. Turns out neither of these does. So I've got two factors, and so I'm going to have two fractions. And my denominators are going to be those two irreducible quadratics. Now, if they're irreducible quadratics, that means that the numerators are linear. So each one of these is some x's plus a number. So ax plus b and cx plus d. So now I want to try to do some work to solve for a and b and c and d. So I'm going to multiply both sides by the least common denominator, which is just this right here, to clear all the denominators. So when I do that, I'm going to get 2 is equal to ax plus b times here. The s squared plus 4 will cancel, but that's going to get multiplied by s squared plus 2s plus 4 plus cx plus d, and that gets multiplied by s squared plus 4. Let's see if I can find a marker that's a little bit better. Okay. All right. Now, since both of these are irreducible quadratics, there's no convenient real number I can plug in that will zero them out. So I'm just going to multiply things out and equate like coefficients. Now, at first glance, that might seem atrocious because I'm going to get a system of four equations and four unknowns. Usually what happens is some of the equations only involve, or some of the variables only show up in some of the equations. So it's not usually that as bad as it sounds. We'll see. So 2 is going to equal, I'm just going to distribute the ax to each piece. Sorry, that's an s. These are s's. I'm so sorry. My variable here is s's, so those should have been some s's plus a number, not some x's plus a number. All right, so I'm going to get a s cubed plus 2a s squared plus 4as. Now let's distribute the b to each piece. So plus bs squared plus 2bs plus 4b. All right. Now here I'm just going to foil this out. So plus cs cubed plus 4cs plus ds squared plus 4d. Okay. So, let's take a look. How many s cubeds do I have? There's some s cubeds there and some s cubeds here. <laughs> so, I've got 2 is equal to a plus c copies of s cubed. Let's look at the s squareds. So, here are some s squareds, here are some s squareds, and here are some s squareds. So, I'm going to have 2a plus b plus d copies of s squared. Let's look at the s's. There are some s's, and there are some s's, and there are some s's. So, I'm going to have 4a plus 2b plus 4c copies of s. And everything I haven't used is just constant. So it looks like for my constants, I've got a 4b and a 4d. Okay, so we've been going for a little while now. I'm going to stop this video, and we'll pick up in the next video by solving this system of equations for our a's, our b's, our c's, and our d's.